By this point, your weapons are connecting with your enemy's faces, and you've managed to get a handful of level 2 technologies, like double sink kits or ferro fibrous armor. Perhaps you found your first 20 rack or gauss rifle, but the struggle is real in fitting the blasted thing onto a mech. You might want to move up in mission difficulty to score those epic weapons and gear, without being shredded like a mannequin in a chipper. Enter the extra light engine, stage left. The saying goes, you gotta spend money to make money, and boy, is the XL engine the epitome of that statement. Just the upgrade from a standard to an XL will run you roughly a million C bills for a medium mech, not to mention a heavy or assault. That's for one, so if you're the kind of commander that lives paycheck to paycheck, you are either going to have to force your company to eat nothing but space ramen for months, or learn to ensure that your investments aren't blown out from under your feet. Who am I to tell you how to run your unit, though? Maybe your pilots all harbor a secret desire for zero-G noodles. You do you. Still, if you think simply slapping one of these bad boys into a mech is a straightforward cure-all for your mission woes, you might want to have the repair truck on standby. And maybe a hearse. Since the side torso loss destroys your shiny XL engine, you are going to want to give it the most protection possible. So how do you do that? If you aren't already maximizing at least your front armor by this point, you need to turn in your neuro helmet and report for sanitation duty. Whether you maximize your back armor is a choice I'll leave to you. Smart tactical play in the field will minimize the risk to your rear, enabling you to shave slightly. Just don't come whining to me when that shifty VTOL poopoos your mech, and your wallet. Scrubbing bubbles ain't gonna take care of that stain. For the more crunchy inches, commanders, we have a selection of defensive gear that will improve survivability and reduce repair costs, not to mention improve the morale of your techs with some extra free time in the break room. Just don't think that all of that saved weight goes to more weapons. Save some of that freed up space for these babies. The first of which is Case 2. Please don't think that you can replace this with the lighter Case, which is a piece of shit if you are plugging in an XL engine. Honestly, it's kind of a piece of shit just straight up. Use Case 2. Put all your ammo into a single torso, give it the upgraded case, and go share your love of all things that go bang with your enemies. Preferably from range. I know, most of the time this piece of kit does nothing while costing you a full ton during construction. The thing is, you'll never really see case do work until you get back to the mech bay and notice you need to replace an ammo bin. So don't be fooled by the lack of in mission feedback. Put case in your ammo based mech. Case saves. And keep an eye out for clan case which brings the weight penalty back to just a half ton, but know you'll need clan armor on your mech to use it as well. Next on our list of handy dandy kit is the anti-missile system. More wasted tonnage you say? Not so fast my friend. Most of the time, your mechs will eat a single salvo of missiles per round, so honestly any of these options are… usable. However, of particular note are two varieties, the laser AMS and the AMS Mark II. The first for not needing ammo, and all of the warm fuzzies that feature provides, the second for being an absolute beast at swatting down stinging gnats flying in your direction. What's particularly interesting about AMS in general is that their strength amplifies greatly the more of them you use, so don't be shy about passing them out. Many of the overload settings enable the system to fire multiple times per round, and or cover units other than just the mech carrying the kit, so make sure you are upping the juice while you're in mission. They don't start in overload mode, so you'll need to flip the switch each time you drop, but the hassle is worth the effort. The steel rain put up by a lance of AMS toting mechs will keep your paint looking fresh while you blast your enemies into oblivion. Seems like it should be a Jurgens commercial. For one and a half tons, the Guardian ECM is one of the best bang for your buck items you can equip on your mechs. Providing a shield value of 4 to the equipped mech while in passive mode, you receive a sizable reduction to the hit chance of incoming fire from your enemies with this system. It provides a larger bonus when in passive mode, so like the AMS, this piece of kit gets better the more of them you hand out. It also starts in this mode on a mission drop, so if your whole unit is packing, you won't need to worry about turning it on, unlike your significant other. This unit is similar to equipping plus dodge gear in a traditional RPG. Install in mech, get hit less. What's not to like? I do also want to mention that if you are finding yourself struggling to squeeze in a guardian on your mechs, there is the option of the excellent AR-12 sheath beacon. For the purposes of this discussion, it duplicates the effects of the guardian and adds some sensor strength to boot all for the low, low price of replacing your cockpit sensor equipment, plus an extra critical slot in the head. That's right, it's tonnage neutral. Both the ECM and the AMS are too useful to leave off your mechs once you get into 3 school missions and above, so you should get into the habit of keeping them in mind when you upgrade to XL. You are going to have access to a lot of ways to reduce the weight of your mechs, so spending a few tons on defensive equipment is worth the investment. Unlike your enemies, you don't have unlimited mechs or funds, 
and the loss of even just a couple of XL mechs could financially ruin your company. Defensive equipment is a foolproof way of adding survivability to your unit. And trust me, there are a lot of foolish mech warriors out there. While adding defensive items in the mech lab is a solid start, the rubber meets the road on the battlefield, there are going to be some adjustments you can make to your fighting style to further increase the longevity of the XLs you field. Firstly, if you are a commander who uses at least one mech as some sort of fire support, that role is a prime candidate for upgrading to an XL early, as presumably you keep this mech to the rear of your battle line already. The range will help to mitigate hit chance, as the AI will prioritize lower armor units that it has a decent chance to hit. However, if you use, say, a single flush unit backed up by a horde of barrels on legs, that won't be enough to keep you safe. You may want to start taking slightly worse shots, or shots with fewer guns, in order to take prime hexes that offer cover like forests and rocks. To that end, the game doesn't recognize war crimes, so feel free to wreck some office buildings if you find yourself in an urban environment, and then climb into the hole you just made. If you are employing this strategy religiously, you might also consider bringing along some jump jets for easier traversal. Specifically for mechs in the medium class, though this does somewhat apply to heavies as well, you can choose to use the saved weight from the XL to simply install a bigger engine. Extra movement will give you more control over the battlefield, letting you reach those aforementioned cover hexes and even potentially giving you additional pips of evasion. I strongly recommend against stand and deliver playstyles when running an XL, so you'll want to stay mobile. While it may not look like much, going from a 4-6 movement profile to a 5-7, or better, 5-8, will make a massive difference in your options in battle, in addition to keeping you safer from return fire. Remember that XLs make inviting targets, and you only have so much armor you can place over a single mech's torso. Because of this, you may want to cycle your mech's evasion and cover situation to spread out the incoming fire over your entire company as opposed to having it concentrate on a single unit, even if that unit is the most heavily armored. While shaving your evasion this way will likely result in more damage received overall, keeping your mechs otherwise functioning at full capacity will enable you to bring all of your firepower to bear on your enemies, hopefully eliminating them faster. And finally, if you do find yourself in a pickle, with a weak or open torso exposing your tender inner XL to the harshness of reality, don't forget that you can position your mech to take fire on the opposing flank side. It will remove the chance for the exposed torso to be hit, though it will also eliminate a leg and if it still remains, the associated arm. The concentration of damage on the flank will not protect you under sustained fire, but is a good tool to keep in your pocket when you need to squeeze another round, or possibly two, out of a crippled unit before rotating it off the line. A shrewd commander will combine all of these techniques, fighting style adjustments and mech construction, to keep their mechs safe while pummeling the enemy. A hunchback says 50 tons on the 10, but when chock full of weight saving technology, it might end up bringing 60 tons or more of effective kit onto the battlefield, in a container that is more nimble and costs less to drop than its heavier cousin. Multiplied out across your entire company, that could be a whopping 25% more equipment than listed. If Battletech is a world of small advantages, that is like bringing a wrecking ball to the bowling alley. Is there a specific technique you found to be effective that I didn't include? Or perhaps you just want to express your enthusiasm for this fantastic game? Either way, drop a comment below. I'm Gubaji. Hopefully you figured that out by now. In any case, I'll see you on the battlefield. Whole or in chunks. Can't take many more hits like that.